Korea becomes independent or declares independence, they will veto Catalan membership of the European Union. They've explicitly said that. They have never, ever made that explicit veto threat about Scotland. Um, obviously, Spain doesn't wish to be seen to encourage independence movements because Spain has more active independence movements than any other country in Europe. It's not just the Catalans. There's the Basques, Galicians. The Basques, there's the Galicians. There's independence movements in uh, Valencia and um, uh, the Balearics. Mm -hmm. Catalonia becoming independent doesn't end the Catalan question for Spain because Catalonia is only one of what's called El Paisos Catalans, mm -hmm. Catalan countries, plural. Valencia, the Balearics, and a part of southern France are all Catalan countries as well. So two of the largest Catalan countries would still be a part of Spain in the event of Catalan independence. You know, so the threat of to the Spanish state of Catalan independence movement doesn't end with the independence of Catalonia. Mm -hmm. you know, the threat to the British state of Scottish independence ends with the independence of Scotland. But also there's an independence movement in Galicia, regionalist parties in, in the Canary Islands, in Andalusia. There's a lot going on. There's, Spain's quite a... There's a lot of centrifugal forces in Spain. But yeah, the British media just tend to look for that headline. Exactly. They Doesn't just got a bomb. They, just because Catalonia, they would veto you. But Spain... Like I said, Spain's argument is that we're not going to allow the independence of Catalonia because it's unconstitutional. And for the same reason they vetoed, uh, they refused, they didn't veto, they refused to recognise the independence of Kosovo. Kosovo made a declaration of independence which was unilateral and wasn't recognised by Serbia. Serbia claims that the Kosovo independence is against the Serbian constitution and refuses to recognise it. But Scottish independence wouldn't be like that. Scottish independence would be perfectly constitutional, it would be within the framework of the British constitution and it would be perfectly legal, it would be negotiated with Westminster and recognised by Westminster when it finally comes about. And the Spanish Foreign Minister was asked about that back in 2014 and he said, you know, the British constitution seems to allow the independence of Scotland and if that's what happens, if Scotland becomes independent in a constitutional way, Spain would have nothing to say. And later on that summer, uh, Mariano Rajoy was asked explicitly three times in an interview with El Pais newspaper if he would veto an independent Scotland from becoming a member of the EU. And three times he refused to answer because he didn't want to say, yes, we would, because that would be a lie. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, and he didn't want to say, no, we wouldn't, because that would encourage Scottish independence. But he still has to play the hard man. Exactly. But if he says, yes, we would, veto Scottish independence. What they're saying in Catalonia is that the Spanish state just doesn't recognise the international right to self-determination. Mm -hmm. And if Spain was then to veto Scottish... How does Spain benefit by vetoing Scottish membership of the EU? It doesn't benefit at all. Isn't there a question about fishing that would well, actually hurt it? That's another well? issue, yeah. But there is no benefit to Spain. There is no political or economic benefit to Spain from vetoing the membership Scottish membership of the European Union. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. In fact, they would do themselves quite a bit of damage. The damage they would do would be political because they would give a very clear demonstration to Catalonia that their opposition to independence movements is based on a refusal to recognise the right of self-determination. Because here's this country, Scotland, which has achieved its independence in a perfectly constitutional, uh, legal and internationally recognised way and Spain's refusing to recognise it. So that would give the Catalans the excuse they need to internationalise their dispute to say to the European Union, well, I mean, we need help here. These people just don't recognise the right to self-determination. Mm -hmm. But also there's the, the thing about access to fishing waters. Spain, you know, if you go into any Spanish supermarket, the fish counter is this enormous big riding thing full of life fish, you know, that they eat a massive amount of seafood. But more specifically, Mariano Rajoy, the Spanish acting Prime Minister, is a representative in the Spanish Parliament for uh, Galicia, for A Coruña. Hmm. And the major funders of his own local political party is the Galician fishing fleet, which depends on access to Scottish waters. So if he vetoes Scottish membership of the European Union, he deprives 
the biggest funders of his own local party of a huge part of their income. And they're really not going to be happy with Mariano and he's going to find not He's going to find funds for his own political party. His own local party are going to dry up dramatically. He's not going to do that. Spain does not benefit by the, by veto in Scotland. There is no political or economic benefit to Spain from veto in independence Scotland. What's going to happen with Scottish independence is that Spain will huff and bluff and make all sorts of noises about it. It will never ever come out with an explicit veto threat. And the morning after a yes vote in a Scottish independence campaign, the Spanish government will say, we've said all along that Scotland and Catalonia are totally different situations. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they've said. And that was kind of confirmed by a, a very interesting development last week, which hasn't made it into a press, which is delighted to find any kind of minor slight and blow it up into some big you know, blow for Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, the Spanish foreign minister... García Margallo was interviewed on a Spanish political show called El Cascabel, the rapper. You know. And he was talking about the growth of extremism in Europe. He was talking about, he mentioned the, the extreme right wing candidate in the Austrian elections. Mm -hmm. And then he talked about how Britain, the, the Conservative government, had come under the influence of the, the political extremists of U, UKIP and Nigel Farage. The influence of Nigel Farage had caused the Conservative Party to drag the United Kingdom out of the European Union. And then he said, I expect that within four to five years, England, and uh, up till then he'd used the term El Reino Unido, the United Kingdom. And then he said, within four to five years, I expect England to return to its 16th century frontiers, he said. And the interviewer said to him, what, are you talking about Scotland? And he went, yeah, he says, I expect that Scotland will seek an independence referendum hmm. um, in order to maintain its membership of the European Union. And then he was going about the British Conservatives, and he said that, you know, that when you put the interests of your party before the interests of your country, the result is catastrophe. So he was taught, I mean, I, always felt, I honestly nearly fell off the chair these remarks, he was talking in a very sympathetic manner about Scottish independence, the Spanish foreign minister. Mm -hmm. you know, he was talking in a very sympathetic and understanding manner about Scottish independence because recognising that Scotland had been put into an impossible situation because of the actions of a Conservative government which had put party before country and had come under the influence of political extremism and saying the highest levels of the Spanish government, that they expect Scotland to become independent within 45 years. And not once, then previously in the same interview he'd been talking about actions that the Spanish government was trying, going to take to discourage the Catalans. So it would have been very easy for him at that juncture to talk about ways that Spain would discourage Scotland from becoming independent. But that's not what he did at all. Mm -hmm. He spoke in a very sympathetic tone. And none of this was mentioned in the Scottish news media. Oh, of course not. Uh, but there was another extremely interesting development last week, which just made me laugh. You know. As I've said, Spain has never, ever explicitly threatened to veto Scottish membership of the European Union. Never. But we still have that. It's become a persistent, you know, it's a persistent no. Yeah. You know, Spain will veto you, Spain will veto you. And it's based on no factual evidence at all. It's just this supposition Spain wants to discourage Catalonia, therefore they're going to veto you as well. That's it. That's the basis of it. It's, a, it's an assumption. But last week, because the Brexit negotiation also affects Gibraltar, mm -hmm. and Spain has far, far stronger views on Gibraltar than it does about Scotland. Mm -hmm. Gibraltar, I mean, it's, Gibraltar isn't just a, a, a barren rock in the south of Spain. It's a really important site in Spanish history. You know, El Rey de Gibraltar is one of the traditional titles of the Spanish monarch, the King of Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. It was Gibraltar, the name means the Rock of Tariq, and the Tariq in question was the Muslim general who invaded Spain in 711 mm -hmm. and founded the Kingdom of Andalus. It's like the Battle of Hastings, the site of the Battle of Hastings. You know, it's, it's a really important site in Spanish history. And it's a, the Spanish government really feel exceptionally strongly about British sovereignty of Gibraltar. And García Margallo said last week that Spain, uh, I, I would imagine he's taking advice from Spanish lawyers, I would imagine, 
I don't know much about the, the Brexit process, but I'd always assumed that it was, you know, it was carried out on the basis of majority vote. But Garcia Margallo says no. He says that the terms, the broad terms of the negotiation have to be decided unanimously by the 27 remaining members of the European Union. And he said that if the United Kingdom wants to include Gibraltar in its Brexit negotiations, Spain's going to veto the United Kingdom. So the, ex the only explicit veto threat that Spain has made now, rightly or wrongly, well, we can do that. The only explicit veto threat that the Spanish government has made is a threat to veto Westminster and the Conservative Party, not to veto an independent Scotland. Mm. But you won't need that. You, know, you won't need that in the Scottish Union. You certainly won't. But it's amazing to hear all of this information that we don't normally see about Spain. But to throw a wee spanner in the works with that, what do you think about the possibility that the British government are doing everything they can, everything they can to Weedle out of Brexit. They're trying to sneak out of it, not do it. That's a possibility. I think Brexit is going to cause. I, had a, I did a talk a couple of weeks ago, and one of the other people talking was a European lawyer. She's a specialist in EU law. And she was talking about, you know, the effects of Brexit on the economy and the legal implications and the like. And basically, what she said was that it's going to be brutal. Mm. It's going to be really brutal. And people just don't expect just how nasty it's going to be. I'm sure that the highest levels of the British government are aware of that. Mm -hmm. And they are going to do all they can to try and get out of it. But I think what's going to happen if they do that is there will be a massive outcry from the people who voted to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a huge, huge upswing in support for UKIP and British politics will get even nastier than they already are. Mm. And it's, the United Kingdom will become a very, very unpleasant place. And it's not a place, I think, that Scotland can have any part of. Or can, can yeah, can continue to stay in. No, exactly. And the, I think their politics will become, well, they already are, but even more alien to Scotland than they already are. You know. I think their way around that might be the idea of you know, they'll wait until the terms are discussed. They'll, given the people she's put in charge of it aren't the, the best uh, brains we've ever seen, like they'll make a pig's ear of the negotiations. The negotiations will lead to an outcome for Britain that will be quite clearly bad, and then they'll call a second referendum to say if you agree with the mm. exit deal or not. I, I don't know that. I've heard this theory put forward in a number of places. Do you think it might happen? It's possible. I mean, it's just something's up in the air at the moment. Obviously, they're stalling on the, the pushing the Brexit button because they are completely unprepared for it. They seem to be talking about setting that in motion sometime next year. It seems to be what they're talking about. Others, are, you know, they, they want to have the process completed by the time of the next election, which would be 2020. Though other people are saying that, you know, there's going to be an early election, so who knows what's going to happen. We, we are in deeply uncertain times. Yeah. And that's why I think it's important for where the United Kingdom isn't given us. You know, that was the other thing, the other big argument during the independence referendum in 2014 was that we have certainty, stability and security within the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what we don't have just now. We don't have that. And I think it's up to people in Scotland to, we need to create our own stability and security. You know, and if we were an independent country, we could do that for ourselves. We wouldn't be dependent on these criminal incompetence. You know, I mean, it was gobsmacking the incompetence. You know, that the, the, they had no plan at all. It's just shocking. So that brings me on to another point I wanted to ask you about, because it's, I think it's an important part of the discussion, although if the new referendum comes quickly, then... It's, we won't have as much time to develop this as, as might, has been suggested, but you're saying take control of our own affairs. And in order to get people over the line of thinking we can do it, then there a lot of people talked about, you know, if the next referendum is five years or ten years, we need to be working on building up cultural confidence mm -hmm. in the meantime. And it's, it's an idea, I, I think, there's a lot in that that's very important. But where does that, what happens to that now that we've, the well, next know, referendum might be in two minutes? Well, exactly. It's, it's, it's a bit kind of, oh my God. You know, <laughs> and, uh, 
I think that's one of the reasons why, obviously, the Scottish government is trying to explore all other options because they weren't expecting to have another independence record. 